Hello Lizzie here. Today I'm going to show you how to make Trixie the mouse. So she's either going to be a soft toy or she could be a pin cushion as well. Um, so let's get started. So what I've done is I've printed out my PDF pattern. Uh, so it has full instructions in there, plus it has the, the pattern pieces that you require tucked right at the back. It also has in the instructions full step-by-step -step tutorials on how to do all of these things I'm going to do today. So what I've done is I've cut out all my pattern pieces and I've cut out my fabric. So there's the body pattern piece there and it's cut on the fold. So this is the piece that I've got, like that. Oh, it's got a pin in there. There we go, like that. And I've also put my heat erasable pen through the pattern piece and actually marked where the eyes and the ears are going to go. So if I show you here, so just lay your pattern piece over the top, like this and then just put your pen through that little mark there until you're actually making a mark on your fabric. The same with the ear positions as well. And that way you can transfer those designs onto your fabric really easily. And hopefully you'll be able to see the dots that I've got there. So these are the eyes and these are the ear placement pieces there. So I've already cut out the base as well. This time I've cut the base out in exactly the same fabric. In the sample I did it with dotty fabric. It's up to you what you use. There we go. And I've already put the stabiliser on the back as well. I talked to you that about that in the pattern. Um, so it's up to you whether you use a stiffened stabiliser there and interfacing. This is really quite stiff or just leave it as a soft bottom. Um, and I've also cut out the ears. So you need two pink ears. Let's just show you the pink ears and you need two outside ears as well. Now I've used contrast fabric for the back of the ears but that's entirely up to you whether you do that or not. So there's two pieces of a like batik fabric to go on the back of the ears and of course the base could have been the same. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stitch the eyes in place and oh by the way I've made a tail as well. Now in the pattern I didn't include a tail but on in hindsight I thought well, you know what it'd be good to show a tail on the video. So I've just done a little bit of plaiting with embroidery thread to make a tail and that's in cream but it could be in black or grey or brown. So the first thing we can do is do the eyes. Now the eyes are just a French knot. So if you get some black embroidery thread or dark grey, it's entirely up to you what colour. I've put a knot on the end. So all I'm going to do is bring my knot uh, to the back of the fabric and I'm going through the eye just there. Hopefully you can see that okay. And the knot then anchors that on the back beautifully. And then all I'm going to do, and I'll have to put the fabric down to do this, is to actually um, get hold of the thread with my left hand. Obviously, this is the opposite if you're right hand, and sorry, if you're left handed. And then all I'm going to do is wrap my needle around the thread three times. You can go four if you want. And then I'm just popping that needle just back nearly to the same hole, but not quite. And just popping my needle through and pulling that thread through. And as you do that, it makes a lovely knot. So that makes a really lovely knot just there. So I'll do the same again. So I'm just going to tie this off at the back um, and just do another little knot just to hold that. And if you're a bit worried about whether it'll come undone, you can always pop a little bit of glue on the back there. So again, we're just going to knot the fabric sorry not the thread and then that's a bit of a long tail let's just cut that off and then all we do is come from the back of the fabric to the front where your dot is you've already made your dots with your pattern piece there we go I'm just going to pull that through and then I'm just going to pop it flat on my desk it's really helpful if you do that and you'll find doing the same will help get hold of the threads with your other hand and just wrap your needle three or four times around just keep hold of that thread in your hand and just pop it through it's kind of a couple of threads from where you came up and then just pull your needle through from the other side and then as you pull it through you can let that thread go and it becomes a knot so there's your French knot. Okay. And then again, we'll just, just sign that off at the back there, just with a little knot as well. Let's just catch that. There we go. 
And like I said, you could put a little dob of glue on there just to hold that in place so it doesn't come undone. There we go, smashing. So the next thing we're going to do, so there's our eyes in place. So there's our eyes just there. <laughs> they look a bit odd, don't they? You can see from the front what the eyes look like. But now we've got to make up the ears. So we're now we're going to, to the sewing machine. So what you're doing here now is putting your right sides together. So you're taking one outer and one pink inner and you're putting right sides together. And all you're doing is stitching around the curved part of the ear, leaving that part open. And that's where we can turn through. So do a little back stitch just to hold. And if you need to put your needle down and turn your fabric, let's, you can do that. There we go. It's great if you have that facility. So there's one. So we'll just do a little back stitch to hold. Same again. Uh, right sides together. Little back stitch. Just ease that round if you need to. So I'm just anchoring my needle down and lifting up my foot and swiveling my fabric. Just a fraction, just a millimetre really. And the seam allowances are always quarter of an inch unless I say so. So there's our ears. So you could trim those back. Now you could use pinking shears just to take some of that bulk away. So I'm just going to snip into mine because it's they're very curvy. So a nice little snip in will do. Um, the pinking shears will do just that as well. And just snip around. So this means that when you're um, folding them through, turning them through, um, all of those edges kind of sit nicely on top of each other. And if you didn't do that, it would pleat and pucker and it would perhaps look a little unsightly. Now I turn these through, but I don't top stitch. There's no need really. Okay, so we'll just turn one through. And this is where you can get a, a knitting needle or something. I always use the back of my scissors, I'll be honest, but they're, they're rounded edge scissors. But you're going to have a knitting needle, you're going to have a chopstick, you're going to have something in your stash, a crochet hook, something that you can use just to smooth those curves out. Great for poking corners out, that sort of thing. So there we are. So there's one ear made. That's the inside and that's the out. So now all you're going to do is turn this little um, seam here, this little raw edge. Let's just trim those threads away. You're going to fold those in a quarter of an inch. Now you must give that a nice press and that'll hold. So I'll go ahead and make up the other ear, turn it through, press it, and I'll come back to you with two ears ready to go onto the body. So I've turned my raw edges in about a quarter of an inch and given them a press. You can see they're nice and neat. And I'm just going to give that a little fold in the middle and that's what gives us the shape of the ear. Now I've already hand stitched one ear on and I'm now going to hand stitch the second ear on. And we're going to try and zoom in so you can see. So when I start off stitching, I'm just got a knot at the end of my thread. And then just be aware of when you're coming to where the pleat will be. So I'll just fold that again. So look, now you can see where the pleat is there. And now I'm going to stitch through all of those layers. So just be aware that you're going through four layers of ear. <laughs> so it's just picking up those layers and going through all of those layers. And just keep repeating that. So another little millimetre along, another little tiny stitch. And again. There we go. And, and you can put a pin in here if you want, just to help you. 
and what you're doing is just creating the shape of the ear so I think that's probably my last stitch as the pleat there we go and then we can just carry on to the end there we go do a couple of stitches just to hold those in place and then with the same thread you're now going to attach this to the body of the mouse of Trixie and the pink part needs to go right towards the eye so if I bring that up you'll be able to see so there's my marks there can you see so the length of my ear that I've just stitched should fit where those marks are um, and all I'm going to do see that thread hanging out there I'm just going to pop that in where that first mark is and that'll attach it to the to the head and then all you're going to do if I show you here I'll hold it up so you can see so I've put each end of the ear against those black marks so I'm holding that now in place and I'm literally going to then stitch through all of those layers to hold that ear in place so let's just quickly do that for you and again it's just slip stitches and I start off with a couple of stitches just to hold it because that's where if anything that'll where is where it'll come undone and then just follow the line now don't forget you want this to be fairly secure so little stitches to hold it all in place and you could actually um, reinforce that with a little a few little dobs of glue I suppose it depends what it's going to be used for whether you think it's going to get a lot of use just make sure that it's really securely placed onto the head so last couple of stitches here just make sure the end couple of stitches is nice and tight let's get another stitch in there there we go pop your needle through take it to the back and just fasten off those stitches there and again you could secure with a little bit of glue just to make sure that holds it in place do another little knot I just make a loop and then just slip my needle through um, and that makes a, a fairly secure knot there we go so there we are so we've got both eyes and the ears so now what we're going to do is put the right sides of the body together and stitch down to about three inches from that bottom edge this is the bottom edge so we're going to go from the tip of the nose down to about two-thirds of the way down the back so I'm just going to pop that under the machine and stitch that keep those ears out of the way you can find access to my goal club from my website sign up and you can connect to my Facebook live events and join in all the fun my gold club members have on a weekly basis and of course you get free patterns see my gold club video on YouTube for more information so I've pinned the body of Trixie together and I'm just going to start at the tip of the nose and come down to where I've I've put a pin there it's about two-thirds you want to leave two inches on her back for stuffing so let's just start there about quarter of an inch seam allowance again little back stitch we really need to be careful here because we've got uh, the tip of the nose to consider so right down her back about there like I say it's about two-thirds okay so let's just trim all those pieces up so you're trimming your threads as normal and just trim into her nose so instead of going straight across that point come in from about an inch so there's less fabric there the less the better but you don't want to compromise your stitching um, and then you can turn it through if you want but we're going to actually stitch the base on here now so I'm going to keep it that way and then turn it through at the end 
So with the base, which was already stabilised, you can see I've, I've got it all open. I don't have a complete circle on the base of my mouse um, and that's deliberate because I find that much easier. So I'm going to start about an inch in and take my base and offer those two up together. So I've got right sides together with my base. So here's my base. There's no, there's no back, front, sides or anything. Anywhere on here is good to start. So like I said, about an inch in. So if I pop a pin in here, you'll be able to see, you're going to start stitching um, about here. And it's a quarter of an inch. Now I've put my stabilizer on the back there and it's a quarter of an inch. And I don't really want to stitch on that stabilizer. Um, so I'm gonna try and keep it to just a smidge under quarter of an inch. Um, and now I'm gonna take this all the way around to where it nearly meets and then about an inch away I'm going to then join the back pieces together and I'll show you when I've got to that point but let's stitch the base on first so just pop it under your machine because normally you would fit the base to the circular body but I do find it easier to do it this way So again, little tiny stitches. In fact, you could reduce your stitch length to down about to, to about two. Let's try and do that. There we go. Um, because you're stitching something that's circular, again, use that needle down position if you have it and just ease your fabric round. And I find it easier to stitch the straight edge onto the circular edge. You might, you might find it different, but that's how I tend to do it. Just take a little bit at a time. So just easing it round. And like I say, when you're about an inch from the other end, I'm just going to take it off the machine. Just ease all those curves. So nearly there. Okay, that'll do. So I'm not going to do a back stitch because I'll go over the stitches again. So now I've attached my base to my mouse, but I've got two loose ends. So if I show you here, you got a, like a little door flap there. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to actually offer all this up to make sure it's going to fit properly. So you're going to offer up those edges. So let me show you here. You're going to offer up those edges to make sure that all fits. Because you're, you're dealing with biased edges with that circle, you may have stretched it. And this is why we do it this way. And then all you're going to do is pinch that seam together. And if you can see, if I pinch it together, that gives us that perfect back seam there. So that's what I'm going to pin. And that's what I'm going to stitch. So if I pin that together, And then I'm going to stitch up that back seam, oh, only about an inch, literally. So I'm going to stitch up there about an inch because I want that turning gap there for the stuffing. Uh, I mustn't forget to put the tail in. Now, in the original pattern, this is deliberate, I didn't have a tail, but then um, it was decided <laughs> with some of my, my friends that we needed to put a tail in. So when we come to stitch this last little piece together to the base, we'll pop the tail inside and catch that in the seam. So all I'm going to do now is stitch up that back seam. So just squish your base so it lays flat. Take your pin out. Do a back stitch so it holds. And literally you're going to stitch uh, no more than an inch, a couple of centimetres. Okay. And then all we're going to do then is offer the whole lot up and finish stitching around there. And I'm going to attach the tail at the same time. I'm going to pop that in now. Let's pop it in here. So don't forget to put it inside the mouse. And try and get, get that on the actual seam so at least it's central. You could pin it. So use that needle down facility to help you again. And then we're just going to finish off. And again, make sure that everything's lined up. Uh, 
and then it's just a nice back stitch to start and stop so it's secure <laughs> I'll, I'm going to cut my knot off of my tail there we go so there we are so that's our, our mouse made up we just now need to turn her through and stuff her and then all we do is ladder stitch that gap closed it makes a nice neat finish now because we've got stabilizer in that base it's like it's like trying to cut, turn cardboard so you kind of really got to push it through um, if, if you think you're going to leave a bigger gap to turn because of that I'd suggest not only because it's a lot more for you to hand stitch and if if you're not confident with your hand stitching that you know that's going to notice the most and um, the last thing we do is actually put the whiskers on <laughs> so there's our mousy she just needs stuffing now lovely Trixie so I'm going to go away and stuff her and come back and show you how to close that opening and put the whiskers on so I have stuffed Trixie and there's her bottom there's her tail so now I want to show you how to close the back up where you've stuffed her right so you can see there's the there's the opening where we stuffed her so I've got my thread I've got a knot on the end and I'm going to put that knot um, behind inside but then I'm going to come up where the fold is where the quarter of an inch fold it all kind of automatically goes in so I'm going to put my needle in there there we go and so I've come up where the fold is and then all I'm going to do is slip my needle along that fold about two millimeters and then I'm going to take it across to the other side and then run my needle down again another couple of millimeters so if I can turn it so I can I can do it show it and do it so I'm going to run my needle a little way along there we go go her ears are in the way now <laughs> okay and then I'm going to come up the other side and I'm going to come up in the, within the fold of the fabric so you can't see the stitches they're almost invisible and then I'm going to run my needle along that fold again and across to the other side and along the fold across to the other side along the fold and you'll end up it, and it literally looks like a ladder so again along the fold and this is inside jump across take the needle up, down the fold again you can see those stitches there developing I can pull that tight now if I want to um, across to the other side again along the fold and all you're doing is keep on going and you'll, you'll be able to see this better when you do it and you're just literally making this folded look here if you can see where my finger is you can see what the stitches look like and when we get to the end all you're going to do I'll finish this off now so we can do the whiskers is just pull all that give a little squidge and that gives us a lovely neat closure there so I'll, I'll finish that off in, in just a little while so now we need to to put the whiskers on here so if we keep it there so you can see I love our ears um, all you're going to do is get some more strands of your black embroidery thread now this is where you could definitely do with perhaps putting some glue probably on the thread um, and you're literally going to go through the tip of the nose she won't feel it I promise and then you're just going to leave a fairly, fairly long piece because then you can always trim and then you're just going to go back on yourself and I think only twice is needed so I'll just do this so I can see and again leave a nice loop kind of you've got enough thread so so I would suggest you have more than what you need and then you can trim like that and trim just open up the loop <laughs> 
and there's our whiskers. Now if you'd put a little dob of glue on the thread as it went through, just that last little bit it went through, that would absolutely hold it fast and then her whiskers won't come out. But there we are, there's Trixie. So she's got a nice flat bottom so she will sit and obviously I've got to finish that little bit there. But that's her done. So there we are. We've got Trixie without a tail and Trixie with a tail. So I hope you enjoy making Trixie and make loads.